And a great pleasure to welcome on our Book Talk segment today, a woman who's written a very interesting book. Uh, it's going to help a lot of people, I'm sure. It's called The Berkman Method, Your Personality at Work. We're joined by uh, Sharon Berkman Fink today from, uh, I believe you're in uh, tech, Houston, Texas. Is that right? That is right. How are things in it, Houston it's today? It's down here. <laughs> it is nice. It's warm and humid. It's got a little like living in a steam bath. You're, you're like here in Florida, so uh, yeah, not, not too much I, difference. Just like Florida. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to talk. You had a chance to, to read through the book and, and uh, uh, really enjoyed it. And uh, this, Now, this is actually the Berkman Method, for people that aren't aware, uh, is something your dad actually came up with. Is that right? He did. Uh, so we've been around for over 60 years, and it really he was one of those greatest generation guys that came back from the Second World War and was swept into the booming, exciting field of social psychology. And by that, we meant that it wasn't just psychiatry in the couch. It was... Uh, taking social ideas into the workplace and helping people understand one another and do their jobs even better. I guess a lot of that, like you said, after the war, uh, during the war, obviously, they had to, you know, build the planes and, and tanks mm -hmm. and all that and, and come up with really new ways of doing it. And that kind of went into, uh, after the war, of uh, building the real infrastructure for manufacturing in this country, didn't it? it well, it did, and actually he was a uh, bomber pilot, and so what, he, what started him thinking is that he noted how the different uh, members of the crew would return from these, you know, life and death missions. He went on 19 before he got shot down for the final time, mm. but uh, they, they could fly at maximum 25. At any rate, they'd come back, and each would tell their story, and they would tell the truth about what happened, but they also... They had different ideas and perspectives, different filters and values about what they were what they were relating, and and he started thinking how that was significant because they were doing they were playing different roles in terms of the quote unquote team uh, on the crew, and and so he kind of translated those ideas for, that he learned in the military into how people were actually doing their jobs in the American, in that time, the American workplace. We're now actually in 22 languages with the questionnaire, and we find that there's a lot of similarities all over the world between people. Did he have any uh, resistance uh, when he came up with this, See, when he approached businesses to, oh, to implement that, it? Yeah, that's a great <laughs> question, Doug. There was an awful lot of skepticism. Um, it, it, pretty much business and uh, industry was thinking about uh, production and efficiency, as they, of course, still do today. But the idea that you would talk about personnel and this, what they call the soft skills, the people side, was pretty still very new and radical at the time. And, and he really had a tough, tough uphill battle to convince them that there was a worthwhile purpose behind that. But I have to say that, you know, the, really our title... The, your personality at work mm -hmm. is really kind of a play on words because it's not just for the workplace. It's for all of our relationships. And it certainly, we have stories about couples counseling, about students using this insight to help them select a college. So it does make a great graduation gift for your high school or college bound student or, or for your college bound student that's looking for a job. Because yeah. there's a big career part to that. Uh, so, you know, really does have, wherever you have people, you have relationships, and it's helpful information. Yeah, I guess you go back to, you mentioned, you know, Henry Ford kind of developed the whole production line, but that, like you said, it was yeah. more for production purposes, and the people aspect probably wasn't as big a part of that as it should have been, and... And this was kind of revolutionary, and you know, you got to deal with the emotional side of work, don't you? Or the personality side of work, just, not just the well, physical you part. Do. You know, business leaders will frequently say people are our most important asset, but and then frankly, they're the most complicated part of the business. On the other hand, uh, I would challenge you to find one really successful company that where the people weren't. Uh, you know, harnessing their own talent and learning how to get along with each other in order to be successful. Let's talk a little bit about how the uh, the questionnaire was, was actually works now, or how was it put together uh, mm -hmm. originally? Uh, the, did you sit down and just kind of write out a bunch of questions, yeah, that's, or how did that go? that's a terrific question, yeah. The way he did it was very practical, uh, what, what we call empirical. Uh, instead of going into some sort of theoretical um, 
simulation lab, he just simply talked to people who were in those real jobs. So he would interview, say, an accountant, uh, salespeople, uh, engineers, doctors, teachers, all kinds of different roles, and just speak with them, ask them questions about how do you do your job, how do you get along with others, uh, tell me about yourself. And, and your role here, and from that, formulate the questions he thought would be really useful in terms of constructing the, the basic questionnaire, which actually, uh, we still retain the core questions from the early, from the late 40s and early 50s. We have eliminated a few questions that were interesting for research, but for reasons of, uh, you know, not wanting to invade privacy or whatever, felt like we could dispense with those and, and hone it down a little. But uh, I would say about 85, 90% of those original questions that he developed in this, what he called a test of social comprehension, were still part of the Berkman method today. And I know you kind of break it down into, uh, when, when you talk about personalities or, or people types, into a, kind of a color grid, which I thought was kind of interesting. Can you briefly explain yeah, that? or? Because Right. Well, we, we look at three big um, areas. Well, actually five, but the, the, the first three are what am I interested in? And then how do I go about doing it? How, that, what's my basic style that's effective? In other words, my strengths. And then uh, the, the other part of that, even deeper than what are my strengths, is what do I need from my environment and my, what are my expectations of others? How am I motivated? So in other words, what kind, if I were a plant, what kind of soil would I thrive in? <laughs> and, and so we look at those, what Berkman calls those motivational needs as well. And that's a real differentiator of this particular Berkman method assessment. And for those people that, that take the, the questionnaire or the assessment that it will determine or at least help you determine what type of personality you are, what maybe you're better at in a work environment, right? Whether you're more That's apt to be right. a better boss or maybe you work by yourself more as with the team or that kind of thing, right? Uh -huh. Exactly. Exactly. Because those things can make or break a career. Uh, the last two parts of it, I mentioned there, you know, there were five and I said three already. Uh, what we're interested in, what our usual productive style is or what, we, what people would call our strengths. What do we need from the environment? And then the fourth is, if our needs go unmet for a prolonged period of time, what's our stress likely to look like? And that's, that's important to recognize, too. I like to call that the red light on the dashboard. Because <laughs> if, if you see that red light coming on, you realize you need to do something to, to address it. And when, when you know what it is, you can manage it and, and minimize it. And, what's obviously and then finally, there's good. the career piece. You know, what jobs, what, what actual job families would I be really comfortable and successful in? I was going to say, uh, with, with the way people work now changing so rapidly the last five or ten years a lot of people work uh, you know telecommute at home or maybe only going one or two days a week it really has changed the whole dynamic hasn't it it really has and you know like with everything else there's an upside and a downside i think one of the things some people really love working remotely and you know, they call it telecommuting others go you know i feel i lose energy because i am uh stimulated and energized by being around other folks and, and being with my group, my team. So it's, it's critical to make sure that the kind of job assignment you take is lined up with where your strengths are. And uh, I, I think, at least reading the cover I have of the book, uh, if you buy the book, you get a, uh, a free personal Berkman report. Is that right? You do. Uh, if you purchase the book, you can uh, go to a special place on our website, take the full questionnaire, and then for that uh, purchase of the book, download your own what we call lifestyle grid report, which includes your in what I just mentioned, your interests, your usual behavior, what you need and what your stress looks like. And then also there's a little bonus report that give you a choice to download a topic-driven report on either what are my strengths, what motivates me for best performance, or how do I handle conflict. 
That's great. Again, the book is called The Berkman... That's a lot for the price of one book. Yeah, that's not bad. The Berkman Method, your personality at work, but uh, like uh, Sharon said, not necessarily just for work, uh, for college kids, or really just for your life, you could use this information, mm -hmm. right? You sure could. Can you give out a website, uh, Sharon? People can get a hold of the book. Uh, pretty much any place that books are typically sold, a real easy way is Amazon.com. Just type in The Berkman Method and our book will pop up. Um, or you can go to a Barnes & Noble. If they don't have it, they can order it for you within a day or two. Uh, you know, any... Any, we also have a digital version if you prefer to read it on a, an iPad or a tablet. So uh, all of those are available. Like I say, probably the easiest is just to go to Amazon.com. Great. Sharon Berkman, thank you. has been our guest. And, and I, want to support, <laughs> I want to support our brick-and-mortar books. No doubt too. about it, yeah. yeah. Well, was, and, uh, again, uh, really helpful information. And, uh, Sharon, pleasure to talk to you for a few minutes. I know you're a busy woman, but hopefully we can do it again sometime. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Doug. It was a pleasure.